Yep. Brilliant, thank you. So my name is Lorraine George and I'm the Learning and Development Officer for GWT and I'm joined by my colleague Denise who's going to do all the admin bits around this. Um, so welcome to webinar four, hopefully you're all in the right place on the right webinar. Um, I hope you enjoyed the previous keynote speaker from Matt Kaplan um, earlier. I was just saying before that all of the recordings and the presentations will be added to the new section on the GWT website. So please feel free to sort of go on and then watch them again at, at your leisure. A lot of people have embedded links and things within their presentation to lead you on to further reading. Um, before I introduce Catherine, just really run through some quick bits of Zoom. So if everybody's happy to remain muted, um, Keep your cameras off if you wish. There'll be time at the end of the session for Catherine to answer some questions. But if you've got anything burning, please pop it into chat and I'll make sure um, either Denise or I will pull them out and make sure that you get um, that they get answered. Um, so I'd like to just take a minute to talk uh, to introduce you to Professor Catherine Hennessy, who's chair of ageing in the University of Stirling. And Catherine is in uh, leading the webinar to share Project Gold, which is generating older active lives digitally, um, and to talk about their co-production approach to health promotion in later life. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you very much, Lorraine, for the, for the introduction. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and first of all, I'd like to thank Alice and Clyde and Generations Working Together for the kind in uh, in for invitation to talk about uh, the GOLD project today. I've been attending this conference for uh, a number of years now, ever since I moved to Scotland in the University of Stirling, and, and I've always found it to be very engaging and informative. And as I'll be explaining in a bit, the information, uh, the inspiration for our project came from a presentation that I saw at a previous generations working together conference. So much credit for the gold project is actually due to this conference. So gold is the, the acronym for the name of our project, genera generating older active lives digitally. And as I'll be explaining, the project features an explicitly intergenerational co-production approach to the area of health promotion in later life. That is, older people and younger people are working together throughout the project to inform the development of digital tools and applications for supporting healthy aging. Um, as we've seen, and particularly during the, the COVID pandemic, uh, more and more resources and supports for health are being offered online. Uh, but for, for a whole variety of reasons, many older people may experience digital exclusion, or as it's been put, being on the the, the wrong side of the digital divide. Uh, and <clears throat> some of these reasons include, for example, a lack of access due to economic disadvantage or low levels of digital literacy, which I can say as, as a, a person of uh, age 70, I, I experience quite a bit from myself from time to time, uh, or also health conditions like visual impairment or arthritis in the hands, for example, that make use of digital devices difficult. So a significant focus in the, in the GOLD project will be on enabling access to and creating usability of digital tools for health and well being. Next slide, please, Lorraine. Now, just to give you some brief background to the project, GOLD is, is funded by the UK 
Research and Innovations Healthy Aging Challenge that supports research into social, behavioral, uh, and design aspects of healthy aging. And this government funding initiative brings researchers together with businesses, uh, including social enterprises, to help improve their understanding of uh, the needs and opportunities associated with an aging population. So in this way, uh, researchers will, uh, under this initiative, will support the development of, of products and, and services for enabling better health and well-being in older age. And as, as you can see, uh, in line with this, uh, the aim of GOLD is to explore how we can design, uh, test, deliver, and evaluate digital tools uh, and applications to facilitate structured activity programs for promoting health in older age. Our team at the University of Sterling is uh, collaborating with researchers and designers in the University of Plymouth's Center for Health Technology. So altogether, we're a broadly multi multidisciplinary team of uh, social health and uh, sport scientists, together with uh, gerontologists and educators, digital designers, and health informatics researchers. Uh, and we comprise 25, uh, 25 team members. The University of Plymouth uh, team specializes in designing and developing digital devices and applications for older people, which it does in collaboration with businesses, particularly small and medium enterprises so that these tools can be scaled up for broader use with, with older people. So just to give you an example, uh, a recent project examined the feasibility of using video call technology on large screens in, in care homes to connect uh, older residents in, um, in activities with with high school students, so so they formed a, the the residents formed a, a virtual pen pal club with um, with high school students. Also, this technology allowed residents in across a number of care homes to connect uh, to connect around activities. For example, a virtual a uh, pub quizzes group uh, was formed and, um, and did other activities. So the overall aim of, of this was to reduce uh, residents' isolation and loneliness. And this work showed that indeed it was, it was uh, feasible to do this. So the group at Plymouth, I have to say, do fantastic work with all kinds of very innovative digital uh, tools and applications. So in the, in the goal project, what we're doing is, is trying to find out how feasible it is to create a, a digital version of, of some existing activity programs and uh, to create new tools for enhancing older people's health and well-being. And these, these programs uh, focus on two areas. The first is intergenerational physical activity, and the other is sports-based intergenerational reminiscence. And these are programs that bring together older and younger people around physical activity and exercise, 
and around sporting uh, activities. Uh, just, just to point out for a moment, um, if you see the, the gold logo at the, the, the top of uh, the slides, uh, this was a logo created in a, a student design competition at the University of Plymouth. And it illustrates all the various elements uh, of the project. So the, the G uh, is a pair of joined hands, which represents generations working together. Uh, the O shows a, a digital circuit board for the digital project, uh, part of the project. Uh, the football and the, the hockey stick uh, in the A and the L are for the physical activity and uh, sporting memories elements. And then the, the thought cloud in, in the D is for idea production in uh, partnership with businesses and other stakeholders. So this is, this is what uh, we're all about. And in this way, the project will address the objective of, of demonstrating the potential for developing uh, tools and services for health promotion in later life. Um, so it's, it's rather different than the usual research projects that some of us on, on the team are involved in as the outputs include actual devices and, and tools in addition to the kind of normal academic out, outputs uh, that, we're, that we're used to. Uh, next slide, please, Lorraine. Right, thank you. Uh, so a key feature of the GOAL project is this co-production uh, approach to the work, which features intergenerational groups in collaboration with the project researchers and a range of partner organizations. So our uh, older persons advisory group has been recruited through the active assistance of the project's 10 local and national partner organizations. And uh, these organizations include, for example, Generations Working Together. So again, thank you very much. Uh, active Sterling, which is the Leisure Trust for Sterlingshire. Uh, UK Active, who worked net, work nationally with 4,000 members and partners in the fitness, leisure, and healthcare sectors. Sports Heritage Scotland, which runs a network of sporting reminiscence groups, sporting memories, reminiscence groups, and, and other relevant partner organizations. Uh, some of these other partner organizations represent stakeholder and user groups who, who will be helping us address the particular needs of their constituents in this work. So for example, Eyesight Cornwall is an organization for uh, persons with visual impairment, and they will be helping us think about how to adapt these tools uh, for individuals with low vision. Likewise, there's a rural uh, community group that is helping us think about um, the needs of older individuals living in rural areas with that may have poor broadband uh, connection. So the, ad the advisory group uh, from whom these uh, members, whose members are drawn with, from, or uh, with the help of these various partner organizations, is, is providing input and feedback to the work of GOLD throughout the, the life of the project. Now, the engine of the project, so to speak, uh, are the intergenerational co-production groups that will be bringing together 
older people living in the community and in care homes with younger people who are mainly high school students. And these groups are again being recruited with the assistance of our, our partner organizations with the participants located uh, in Scotland, mainly in Stirlingshire, and in Devon and Cornwall in England. Uh, now what you see here are the original planned numbers for the in intergenerational co-production groups, which we've had to uh, revise quite a bit due to access issues, uh, to care homes, uh, community groups and schools because of COVID. Uh, recently, the, the um, scenario has, has improved quite a bit uh, as, as operations in, in um, some of uh, these organizations are returning uh, to, to normal, more, more or less. So each of, uh, each of these groups uh, will be meeting bi-weekly over a period of six months uh, to share their experiences with physical activity and sport and to explore and test the, the digital technologies designed uh, by the researchers and, and businesses. So the input and feedback of these groups will be used to inform the design of uh, these digital tools for health promotion in a kind of iterative process. So generation of ideas, um, refined by researchers in collaboration with businesses, piloting of uh, some of these applications and, and getting the feedback of the different co-production groups and returning uh, ideas for refinements to, to the businesses and designers. So next slide, please, Lorraine. Thanks. Right. So now I, I had mentioned that a presentation I had previously seen at, at uh, the Generations Working Together con conference was really instrumental in bringing about the GOLD project. And this was uh, Active Sterling's Generations Active Together program uh, that's been running in Stirlingshire since 2017. And this is an intergenerational physical activity initiative that engages year 11 students, so 15 and 16 year olds, in a sports leadership module to, to foster their understanding of aging and dementia and how uh, physical activity across, across the life course can improve health and well being in later life. And the module includes learning in areas uh, such as uh, age specific national guidelines for, for physical activity across the life course, uh, the lifetime benefits of, of physical activity. Uh, attitudes towards aging and dementia, and a lot of kind of fun myth busting about uh, the physical capabilities of older adults, which showcases some really nice examples uh, of, of older athletes and other older adults doing, doing things that uh, teenagers might not expect them, them to be capable of. Students uh, in the module then work together to develop and deliver a face-to-face -face program of physical activity uh, weekly for 30 minutes with older adults in uh, community centers uh, and other settings and in care homes for six weeks each term. And I know Laura Taylor, who's uh, who's leading Generations Active Together is together with this on, uh, together with us 
uh, in this webinar. And uh, I, I leave it to Laura to uh, to chime in with some some an some answers to any questions about th this aspect of gold uh, and and what they've been doing uh, in in that program. So next slide, please. Right. So here are some examples of the kinds of activities that the students in Generations Active Together are engaging in with older participants in care homes and in the community in the Stirlingshire area. So in the GOLD project, what we're doing is creating a virtual version of this project and involving older and younger people in coming up with ideas for digital applications to promote physical activity in, in later life. Uh, I should mention that the University of Sterling researchers have been involved in uh, a number of physical activity and sport initiatives with younger people and with older people in community and care home settings. Some of you may be familiar, for example, with the St. Ninian's Daily Mile program uh, to improve the fitness of, of ch school children or uh, with the so-called CHARMS project, uh, which has developed tools for increasing physical activity in care homes. The GOLD project is different in that it's, it's bringing together both age groups around the health and well-being benefits uh, of physical activity. Next slide, please, Lorraine. Right, so I've just put up a, a few references here uh, to the academic literature on the, con on the concept of intergenerational physical activity programs. This idea uh, is, is mentioned as, as far back as 2007. And there are a few examples that I found of, of such activities, but really not many at all. Um, there are intergenerational projects, for example, that involve people of all ages in activities like community walks, but very few that specifically bring together uh, those under age 18 with older people. And the studies that have been carried out show um, the feasibility of intergenerational programming in this area and have also demonstrated positive outcomes in areas such as uh, physical older people's physical fitness and emotional well-being. Uh, among other benefits, like the um, reduction of age-related stereotypes among younger people. And, and relevant to what we're doing in the GOLD project, this last study on the list introduced a digital element in, in an uh, intergenerational physical activity program involving younger and older people in uh, Nintendo Wii Sports. So playing, so playing tennis uh, or doing other sport um, in, uh, in conjunction with um, a virtual version of, of these activities. And as you'll see in a moment, we've incorporated measures from of some of these outcomes in this research in our own research uh, on gold. Uh, next slide, please, Lorraine. So as I mentioned, the second strand of activity that's part of our work in, in the gold project is in the area of sports-based reminiscence. And, uh, Sports-based reminiscence was, was first developed in Scotland, actually, through a uh, football community setting 
uh, back in 2008, and later was developed into a, a, a national initiative called Football Memories Scotland, which is the world's first national football reminiscence program. And since then, this, this work has broadened uh, to include a range of sporting memories groups through the, org through the organization Sports Heritage Scotland, so one of our gold project uh, partners. And it now includes reminiscence groups in uh, rugby, golf, uh, shinty, curling, and, and cricket. So through these initiatives, uh, Sports Heritage Scotland, Scotland have pioneered the use of sporting heritage materials in reminiscence work uh, as a means for reducing social exclusion and, and isolation and enhancing quality of life for, for older people in general and for older people with dementia. Uh, by creating memories and, and wider social connections. Now, relevant to gold in particular, this, this work has expanded to include some intergenerational programming around sporting memories. And the gold project will be developing uh, this intervention to be delivered online and alongside digital technologies to enhance physical activity participation. Next slide, please. Uh, so as in the area of physical activity, there's a small but a, uh, a growing international literature on the benefits of sports-based reminiscence including programs that are explicitly uh, intergenerational. And again, we've incorporated measures from some of these outcomes uh, in the GOLD project. Next slide, please. So that's a, a bit of background to the structure and activities in the GOLD project. But um, I'd, I'd just like to turn for a brief moment here uh, to part of the science that really motivated me in developing uh, the GOLD project. And this is work that's been done for the past 20 years almost uh, by Professor Becca Levy and her colleagues at Yale University in the United States. And this research demonstrates the, the significant impact of attitudes about aging and older people on healthy aging and the relationship between early life attitudes to aging and an individual's subsequent health and well-being in later life. Some of you may be uh, familiar with these, these studies, but, but what they show rather remarkably, is that perceptions of aging held at younger ages affect a whole range of health outcomes in older age, including uh, how long you live and whether or not you develop chronic conditions like cardiovascular disease and dementia. And, and these are well-designed studies, uh, including one based on a longitudinal cohort study of individuals that has tracked them from young ages right through to older, to older age. And, and these, uh, this research controls for about any other factor that you could imagine that could account for these kinds of relationships. So they, they provide a very powerful message about the impact of attitudes about aging across the, across the life course uh, and, and help to inform what we're trying to do in, in the GOLD project. 
So with this in mind, um, we're using a number of standardized measures of uh, younger person's attitudes towards aging and older people to investigate the impact of goals activities on intergenerational relations and, and stereotypes. Next slide, please. Um, so we're using before and after measures of the impact of the goal project with younger people and older people. And our advisory group uh, has participated in, in the selection and adaptation of some of these measures, which of these measures, which include various uh, well-validated instruments that have been used extensively in intergenerational work. And these include, for example, the uh, children's perceptions of aging and the elderly scale, and the, uh, the facts on, on aging quiz. <clears throat> uh, and as well, we're collecting other data, data in the areas that you see listed here on uh, any previous experience and expectation of participating in an intergenerational program and on uh, younger persons levels of physical activity, uh, their participation in sport, and their use of uh, digital technology. Okay, next slide, please. And likewise with older people, we're collecting data uh, using previously, a number of previously validated measures, as well as new items across a range of areas that you see listed here. So older people's uh, experiences, experiences and expectations of participating in, in intergenerational uh, programs or initiatives, um, attitudes towards aging. We, we particularly want to look at older people's digital readiness, uh, their levels of e-health literacy, uh, and their adoption of uh, and inclusion in, in, um, with digital tools. I, I should say that the Gold Project al also will involve um, university students at both the University of Plymouth and at Sterling University as so-called digital champions who will assist where needed older people in uh, engaging with, with um, some of this digital equipment and tools. We're also interested in um, capturing older participants' views of the functions of, of reminiscence uh, and, and how that, uh, how reminiscence such as is involved in, in sports reminis reminiscence and, and rem reminiscence about their, uh, their experience of leisure activities more generally. Um, uh, is, is valued and, and, and what they feel about this. Um, again, we're capturing, we're collecting information, so a substantial amount of information about uh, their physical activity and functional capacity um, using a, a well-established uh, questionnaire that's been used with older adults. And we're also asking a number of questions regarding their social activity, uh, sorry, their social identity and uh, social support that they receive. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So uh, don't start, start it quite yet. Uh, so in, in this last part of the presentation, what I'm going to do, try to do is to, to give you a flavor 
of what some of the pilot work with, with digital devices and applications that are under development in, in the GOAL project has included. And, and this video clip features uh, one of our University of Plymouth team members who with other uh, colleagues has been working on virtual reality applications using scanned images of, uh, from various heritage sites in, in Devon and Cornwall. And these have included, for example, Powderham Castle that you'll see in the video, um, as well as uh, the Eden Project uh, with its glass biospheres um, with, with uh, plants and habitats from all different kinds of uh, climates around the world. Uh, and we'll also be capturing some other, uh, other locations. So th the plan is to extend this work to include sites in Scotland so that <clears throat> individuals, for example, could take a virtual walk together in, in the country, in the Scottish countryside or uh, a beach in Cornwall, or they could virtually visit uh, a football stadium uh, or other sports venues at which they used to attend matches. So this, uh, the clip will just give you an idea of, um, of what we're doing in that area. Uh, you can start it now, Lorraine, thanks. Be scanning and archiving heritage locations to make those locations accessible. And to do that, we're working with uh, colleagues from uh, health and heritage here at the University of Plymouth. Our games design team is able to create this experience and transform these models into a space that you can navigate, you can walk around, you can visualize it, you can play with lighting and textures and materials and so on. There is a documented uh, health benefit of accessing heritage that gives you uh, activities to do, social spaces to interact with other people, but also reminiscence is quite important for the health and well-being of older adults. I think the vision of the project in the long term has to do with exploring new forms of engaging with heritage in a world where digital technologies are really modifying the way we engage with different places and with different environments. So it's not only about VR, it's also about re-understanding interaction, how we visualize spaces, how we experience spaces, and how we enable access in an inclusive and participatory way. Thanks, Lorraine. Okay, <laughs> right, we're on the next slide. So uh, that just gives you a bit of a flavor of some of what's being developed. Um, these next photos are of uh, care home residents using, care home residents in Cornwall, uh, using some of the virtual reality applications that Gold is, is developing. And the, the Plymouth team carried out a, uh, a gold road show <laughs> in which they uh, brought these devices and applications to a number of participating care homes in, in Cornwall where uh, uh, they captured staff feedback and also residents' uh, experiences and, and reactions with, uh, with some of these uh, devices. Right, next uh, slide, please, thank you. Um, so what you see in this slide is a 102 year old resident <laughs> of one of the participating care homes who's trying out the virtual reality headset, which is linked to the, the circular treadmill that she's standing on. And this piece of, of treadmill equipment is called uh, the Rover Whiz Dish. <laughs> um, and uh, it's being adapted by the manufacturer to meet the functional requirements of, of older users. So 
for those individuals who aren't able to stand, there, there is a uh, seated cycling version that will be uh, developed for this. And in this application, uh, this lady's virtual walk through one of these heritage sites progresses or goes forward as she walks on the treadmill. So these, these two things are tied together. So uh, an interesting visit to one of these locations and physical activity at the, at the same time. So uh, if you just progress it, you can see, uh, well, you see her being assisted by two of the, the, the goal team members. And in the next slide, you can see her having a go with this. There you go, Joyce. Good work. Are you moving around? <laughs> can you see? Um, can you see a white glass building in there? White. It's big yellow on the top. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't see at the moment. Okay. <laughs> you go over it. Go for it, yes. The yellow's gone right down. Oh, lovely. <laughs> oh yes. Pink snow. <laughs> you feeling okay? Yes. Well Good. done. Well done. What can you see? It might be, if you shuffle your hands around a little bit, it might be that you can find the big glass house. That's um, it. If you look, if you look with your head towards my voice. Uh, I can see blue up there. Clouds. That's, yeah, up okay. in the sky, yeah. Clouds. Right, so, oh, yeah, thanks. So, uh, it, she's using the equipment, apparently having a good time. And, and so we've, in this way, we've uh, been able to uh, begin to collect some, some pilot data with, with some of the devices that, uh, that are under development. Some of these involve the modification of uh, existing devices that have already been manufactured. As I said, this Rover Wizdish uh, is being adapted uh, for use within the Gold Project. And uh, there are other devices and applications that are being uh, developed from, from scratch in, in the program. But that just gives you an example of, of one such uh, device. So uh, finally, I'd, I'd just like to invite you to visit the, the Gold Project website that features uh, a number of resources for various audiences and uh, stakeholders in this work. You'll be able, you'll also be able to find um, our monthly newsletters, as well as recordings of uh, the webinars with various researchers and practitioners working across areas relevant to the Gold Project. So I, I but thank you very much for listening and uh, I'm happy to take questions. Oh, thank you, Catherine. That was really interesting. And I think the reminiscent stuff is, the potential of that is just huge, isn't it, around, or so many people maybe that just haven't got the capacity to be able to go out and visit and then can actually have that sensory vision brought back to them, I think would be wonderful. We've got a few minutes left of the website, um, of, of the workshop. I'm just gonna quickly sort of scan through and pick out um, any questions. So one of the questions, um, Catherine was around who's training the pupils about the safety of exercises for older medically compromised folk and are any registered physiotherapists involved? Uh, the answer is uh, yes, we've got um, physiotherapists and occupational therapists from the University of Plymouth on our team and as I said we've um, in our uh, advisory group, we're getting uh, input from uh, various various groups around particular kinds of conditions and requirements of, of individuals related to um, 
related to their health. That would be so important to, to know about before we embark on any use of any use of this kind of equipment. Great. I've, I've got another question in the chat, Catherine. Okay. Uh, so Jean Gilles just says it's lovely to see the older participants' reaction to digital content. What do you think about the current development of digital products in the market? Are they affordable to older people and, and what supports can they access? Very good. Um, I, as I said, uh, the University of Plymouth team works at the, at the Center for Health Technology, works closely with a whole range of businesses, particularly small and, and medium enterprises uh, to develop tools with an eye to affordability um, of these tools and, and resources. So part of it is seeing really what can be accomplished with um, the, kinds of, the kinds of resources that a typical care home might have uh, or other community groups or individuals, for example. Uh, and, and thinking back to what I emphasized right at the beginning of the, of the um, presentation about the kinds of barriers that older individuals would have to accessing um, these kinds of tools, including economic factors. Okay, thank you. Laura, do you want to unmute and, and contribute? I know you might have something to add. Yes, by Margaret's question asked about training the pupils. So I know within the Stirling area, um, myself, um, Laura, I work for Active Stirling. Um, so I go out to the schools. I've got my level three exercise available qualification. I've got my TAGO qualification. So as part of this, we teach, we have like, a, we don't just go straight out to the care homes. The pupils get eight, nine weeks of learning about dementia. We go over every, every session we have a, a practice, so to speak, of what we listen to music, what would be acceptable and how to react to other patients and what people might not be able to do and what would be suitable for a care home. So it's been kind of hard when we've not had care homes to go to. It's been, even getting into the schools has been bothered. But yesterday, as I was saying to Catherine, we managed to get into a care home for the first time in two years. And the pupils were fantastic and adapted. And this is what this programme is about, that intergenerational, being able to adapt. If they, so if they've seen something wasn't working, they managed to adapt to something that was more suitable. So it's myself to say that's dealing with that. Hope that answers some questions. No, thank you. And there's a, a, a last comment that's um, popped into the to the box around um, challenging ageism in relation to the Active Together project um, and how that's going to be measured, I think, is really interesting in, in terms of, I mean, I didn't realise that that attitudes to life infected, you know, physical health, which is really interesting. Um, I think one last question, I'm mindful of the time, from Margaret is, are there any, is there any thought of training young people in doing radio shows or subjects interested to, interesting to them? That's an idea we hadn't thought about, but uh, I, I think as the, as the project goes along, and it's a three-year project. We're just at the end of year one right now. So the we, uh, part of the uh, first year has been recruiting these co-production groups. And so as things are up and running, uh, there may be various interesting elements that are that are introduced to the work. And um, that's a very intriguing idea, actually. So thank you. Catherine, can I just ask, where can people keep up to date with your work as it's ongoing, with it being a three-year project? Will there be stuff published on the university website? If people, you know, will that be intermittent reporting? Uh, yes, all of that will be uploaded onto, uh, onto the GOLD project website. So just Google GOLD project and uh, it'll take you right there. Uh, the website's hosted by the University of Plymouth, so... Okay. Uh, just to jump in about the question about the radio shows. Um, so GWT has worked with uh, Jadborough Grammar, um, oh, sorry, Bertha Park, um, and the school actually has an intergenerational radio station. I'm just going to pop the link in the chat. 
where you can see what they've done. Brilliant. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for your time, Catherine. Um, it's been really interesting and I think it has so much potential. I, I, I mean, you know, and I can just see you must all be so pleased that you can actually get back into to care homes and start physically having, you know, watching and observing people's experiences. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everybody.